and it is right at the top of the hour. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, this is our second Train the Trainer webinar. And welcome back to everyone who was here last week. And welcome to those of you who are joining us for the first time. Today, we're gonna to be talking about way around for public spaces and how it can enhance um, accessible information in lots of different settings. So whether you're at a university or have a residential center or some other sort of training center, there's lots of different ways that you can use way around um, some easy ways and then ways that you can keep adding on. So we'll get into that over the course of the hour. A few housekeeping things. I am recording these webinars, so you can watch it. Um, you can watch the recording on YouTube after the fact. And everyone is muted. We'll go through our presentation and take questions at the end. If you do have a question during the presentation, you can feel free to chat to um, the host at any time and we'll get that. And especially if you're having technical difficulties, go ahead and send us a chat. And we will leave about 15 or 20 minutes for questions at the end. And with that, I would like to introduce today's special guests. Both are from Envision in Wichita, Kansas, Mika Paikala and Therese Gorin. Um, Mika is the Director of Digital Accessibility at the BVI Workforce Innovation Center. And he said we can call that WIC for short. Um, and Therese is an assistive technology specialist. So welcome, Mika and Therese. Good afternoon. It's great to be with everyone virtually this afternoon. I'm coming to you from my home office in Boston. I'm sitting in my living room and on the screen, you can see the, our Workforce Innovation Center background. And I'm from Boston, so I, right now I go to the Workforce Innovation Center about once a month in Wichita, and then other than that, I'm in Boston. So the work for Envision is a 87-year-old blindness agency, one of the largest employers of people who are blind and visually impaired. And like many similar agencies, we started out in manufacturing under Ability One and products for the government. But a couple of years ago, our CEO, as well as the leadership and CEO at LC Industries in Raleigh Durham, got together and we said, you know, there have to be more knowledge economy jobs for people who are blind and visually impaired. Tech, you know, white collar knowledge economy jobs. Not that manufacturing is going away but the tech sector is really booming. So that's how the, the Workforce Innovation Center was, was founded. And we kind of operate as a startup within an 87-year-old company. So our primary mission is creating these positions and finding jobs for people both inside and outside of Envision. But in addition to that, we do a lot of research on new technology, hardware, software, and services. We offer an accessible product hotline, which is a nationwide free service for consumers, and an accessible toolbox podcast where we do tech reviews and likely will review way around on that at some point. And at the end of the presentation, I'll give you more information about the hotline and our podcast. But great to uh, be with everybody. And now I'll turn it over to Therese, who's actually at the WIC in Wichita, Kansas. Good afternoon. As Micah said, I am Therese Gorin, and I'm uh, really excited to be with you this afternoon. Um, I'm here in the WIC offices, and I've been an assistive technology specialist for about 15 years, been with Envision for 10. Um, I'm involved with a lot of programs here, at, along with the digital accessibility team, uh, studying websites and testing products uh, to find that are available for my clients that I meet with and we have a summer program for kids that we work with and I can give you more information about that later on this afternoon. Great well thank you both and I should mention that um, the WIC actually won an award from the Wichita Chamber of Commerce is that correct just recently? Yeah exactly and the Wichita Business Journal um, usually those, those are lunches at our local Hyatt in Wichita, but it was virtual and it was great. Everybody got a little video clip and it was good connecting with a lot of the businesses in Wichita for that that's, event. That's, that's great to, to see that not only are you making a difference within you know, the, the blindness community, but also in your local community. So congratulations. 
Now let's jump right in. You, um, you two got in touch with me earlier this year about an idea for using Way Around at the WIC. And tell me a little bit about how you're, how you're using Way Around and what your challenges were. Yeah, so um, like many businesses, Envision in our, one of our other buildings in Wichita recently obtained a, a micro market. So that's, as many of you know, kind of like a little self-service convenience store that gets set up. It, it usually takes the place of vending machines that might have been more common a long time ago. And so with these micro markets, they can have a variety of more types of products, you know, your typical chips, but also sandwiches and a lot more types of drinks. And our, our market currently, for the most part, had uh, barcode tags that people could read with seeing AI. But of course, it wouldn't really help you locate where items were or find the price or especially, let's say, locate and identify products in the freezer or refrigerator cases. So we heard about way around for public spaces, and we thought we would go ahead and put the tags in our micro market so that people who are blind and visually impaired using either an iPhone, iOS device, or an Android device, or even one of the scanners and a tablet could both locate these products. There's hundreds of products in a typical micro market and also get a little bit more information like the price and perhaps the directions if it's something that you need to heat up. That's great. And I love that you have a micro market in the WIC because they are becoming more and more common in those office type settings. So just as another training tool for people to get used to that and how to, how to use the micro market is a really great asset. Plus they tend to have some good snacks. The, the micro market's actually in our manufacturing building. So we have to take a ride over there okay. whenever we want to check it out. So maybe we'll get one later on, but we, we kind of shuttle between the two buildings and we go there for meetings. So we, we always try to stop in there and get something um, because it's on a, at our Water Street building, which, which has probably more employees on a day-to-day -day basis. All, you know, that it's a two shift operation of our manufacturing. Great, good. Well, it's, it sounds like a big advantage for those employees and you get to take advantage of it sometimes. Now, exactly. um, so I, I'm curious, what some of, you mentioned price and you know, just the item name, which is really important information for people to have. If you've never used a micro market, it's open shelving, so you can go through and select you know, candy bars or chips, um, even fresh made sandwiches, um, some frozen food items. But a lot of those obviously would feel the same to someone. Um, so tell me a little bit about you know, your, I should say that you contacted me at the very end of February, and then of course the world changed a lot mid-March. So um, we're still working with you to actually install Way Around. Um, and get everything up and running since people have been working remotely for a while. And right now we're in the process of putting the tags on the shelf. And could you talk to me a little bit about how that's going and what that process is looking like for you? Yeah, so we've been working with uh, mostly Darwin from Way Around, who's also on the call this afternoon, just in terms of identifying, you have several different tags that can be used. One is a metal on metal, and then there's another one that is just more like a sticker that um, would not necessarily go on a metal item. And we're kind of putting these tags so that it would not interfere with any other labels or tags that are on there. But just uh, we've been working with Way Around to sort of get a uniform way of where to attach these tags and also learning from your best practices. I understand that you've already deployed this in at least a few other micro markets. And so for instance, putting tags on the doors of the freezer coolers so you can find out, you know, let's say if one freezer cooler has waters and juices and another one might have sodas and another one might be a, a frozen one with ice cream and things that you'd microwave. So just kind of learning uh, best practices. And, and like I said, we were happy to learn that you, you have actually set this up at some other micro markets. Way around, web dialogue. 
that's, to way around. that's great. And I was just um, loading up my way around app because I wanted to scan one of the um, sample tags that we've been working on with you. And Mecca, you mentioned that you know, one of the first steps in installing way around for public spaces is deciding where will you put the tags and how will you attach them. And for those of you who were on our webinar last week, we talked a lot about that for personal use in the kitchen. We have seven different types of way tags and for way around for public spaces, we have some additional options as well, some um, 3D options and we can further customize the tags. But a lot of people do like to use um, the standard way tags, the stickers or um, stickers tend to be a pretty popular option. And so this is one example, we've attached it to a little um, plastic tag that would hang on the wire shelving so you can get it in exactly the right spot. And I'll go ahead and scan this way tag so that you can hear the types of information that we can include. Read button. Oh, ready to scan. Ready to ready to scan. Peanut butter M and M's. One dot sixty nine ounces package. One dollar and nineteen cents. So that's that. What is this product and how much does it cost? Which is what you would get when you first scan. And then, if you wanted more information, you could swipe to get that information. Section B. Shelf four. Item three. Items in this section. For a listing of all items in this section. Scan the two-inch circle hanging on the chain to the right end of this section on shelf three. So we've given, we've given some instructions that can give you more of a, a lay of the land for all of the different products. And it did mention uh, circles. So that's something that you could attach to, um, to the shelving with an eyelet. And I'll go ahead and scan that as well so you can hear the different types of information. Read button. Oh, ready to scan. Ready to, ready to scan. Section B. This section contains nuts, chips, cookies, and cereals. The listings below are for items in this section from top to bottom and left to right. So I'll swipe right. Hex, top row item one, corn nuts, item two, beer nuts, item three, planters unsalted peanuts, item four, planters salted peanuts, item five, planters almonds, item six, planters pistachios. And I won't go, with, go through all the rows. It's lunchtime for many of us and I don't wanna make everyone too hungry, <laughs> but um, but it, it gives you a good idea. There's two different you know, types of information. One is what are the products available and how do you locate them? And then the second level is you know, if you're looking for those peanut M&Ms when you scan, are you, is this the product that you remembered from, that, um, from the overview and how much does it cost? So you can really tailor this information in lots of different ways. And Darwin, did you want to say anything um, more about just the way tags and some of your, your structures that you've put in place? Yeah, uh, one of the things, again, everything is, uh, is very free flowing that you can add whatever you want to. Uh, Mika had a very good comment a while ago about like the frozen food case. Uh, when you go in there to scan that very specific item, you can, you can add instructions on how to microwave that product, you know, how how long it should be, what, what heat, and that kind of stuff. Uh, you can also even add information about how to get to the microwave uh, to be able to do that. So this is very, uh, very open to be able to give whatever kind of information you want. But we do want to have uh, build a very uh, general structure so that as we have spoken before, that no matter which micro market you went to, you would have pretty much the same information, that, that description that when you first read it, it gives you the product, uh, you know, the brand, the product name, uh, the size, you know, the number of ounces and the price. And so that's your basic information you're wanting to do to get when you swipe that. But again, if you want more information, you can swipe down, but you don't have to listen to that, those directions of how to microwave or how to get to the kiosk or how to uh, get to other products. You only get that information when you want it. Mm -hmm. And Darwin, um, I wonder if you would say a little bit more about being a way around administrator for an organization and some of the differences between the public tags and the private tags that you can use for home use. Yeah, um, one of the things, in fact, when we were talking last week, there were several people that had some really good questions about the difference between a public tag and a private tag. The, all of the tags that you buy from way around on our website, those are all private tags that are for individuals that you write that information to your account on that tag and nobody else can read that tag. It's only you or people that are using your very same account can scan that and get it. If someone doesn't have your, your account, 
when they scan that tag, it would just be blank. Uh, or they could actually even write information themselves on that tag and it would go to their account. So any private tag can have any number of pieces of information because it's being written to every individual's separate account. But that's not what you want to happen in a public space. You want everyone to get that information. So as we've designed way around, uh, we understand that there's gonna be people in different organizations that they need to have control of those, of those tags in their public space. So what we do is we, we work with that organization. We, we provide a organizational account. And when they uh, get an organizational account, uh, we are able to name as many administrators as you want. Uh, usually we have maybe two, uh, but those two people are the ones that actually can write information. And so the first thing when, when uh, we're, like we're working with Mika and, and Therese, uh, we identify what types of tags are gonna be used in that space. And we format those tags to be very specific to their organization. Uh, no other admin from another organization can, can read and write, well, they can read them, but they cannot write them. Uh, so those tags are formatted very specifically for that organization. So they become the owner of that tag. Uh, no one else can, can uh, control that or, or write to it. And so that administrator, then he writes the tags just exactly the same way as uh, our individual tags are written. It's the same uh, dialogue, the create button. It goes all the way through. You can add custom buttons, do whatever you want. We will be creating some, some custom details for public spaces uh, like a micro market, uh, maybe restrooms or elevators. Uh, so that you can go through and pick those things that they'll be in the same order. Uh, but again, you can add any information that you want. And the only thing that is any different on the public tags is at the very bottom of the create screen, there's a checkbox that says make public. And so if you check that box, then anybody can read it. But if you don't check that box, then just people within that organization can read it. Uh, so it's still somewhat of a a, it can have both features, a private tag or a public tag. Uh, so, uh, so the main thing here is that uh, whoever is installing those, they have control of those tags. They can write what they want and only the admins. So it's not like everyone, uh, for example, at, at uh, the, the center there uh, in Wichita, they, I don't know how many employees, but let's say they have 100 employees not all 100 of them could read and write those tags. They could only read them. Only the admins can actually put information into those tags. Great, and the admin um, setup is fairly flexible. So if Mika and Therese are admins um, and they wanna add somebody, we can easily do that. Um, or if one of them moves on you know, to another organization, um, we can make all of those types of changes very easily. So, but but the information itself is tied to that organization account rather than to an individual admin. Yeah, and just like the individual account, the information is stored uh, on the database for that organization. Uh, so just like, uh, uh, like WIC there has two or three different buildings, uh, they could have organizational information that's for uh, WIC in general, but they could also divide that into building A, building B, building C, so that they had information for each individual building if they wanted to do that. Uh, and that keeps all that information together. Uh, and again, the admins can edit that. So they might have a separate admin for the first building and another admin for the second building and another admin for the third building, uh, but they could even have a general admin that can uh, edit data edit information on all three buildings. So way around is very flexible. Uh, we've designed it to have a lot of opportunities to handle it however you want to be able to handle it. Good, well, thank you, Darwin, for explaining that. And um, Mika and Therese, often people will contact us with a very specific need, like you contacted us with your micro market. I've had other people say they want to tag the kitchens in their training centers or um, art, you know, art rooms with art supplies or woodworking rooms are also really common places where people like to start with way around. And usually we find just like in people's homes and offices, once you start putting way around in, 
then you think, oh, well, I could use it here and I could use it there. And there's all these other places. And I'm curious what other places um, you might imagine using Way Around at Envision in the future. Well, I can jump in here on that. Um, we have a flourishing, a, a very uh, running um, art program. And they're looking at using Way Around for their displays and, and their exhibits and shows. And it will make it easy for anyone who has a Way Around device and, or an app on their phone to scan the art and the display and uh, find out all the information about the artist and the colors and the description of the of the item. Um, we're also looking at implementing it in our our everyday store where you have products that you can purchase um, for accessibility and you know just every day aids to daily living and using it in there. Um, I mean, really, the, the opportunities are endless on how we can use it and apply it. It's, it's true. And one of the things I love about a couple of those examples, um, both the art displays and the store, are that, you know, there's lots of different types of information, you know, for an artist. If there's a, a printed sign, even, you know, that's maybe print and braille next to a piece of art, you're fairly limited in terms of the real estate, you know, what you can actually put there. Mm -hmm. But we've, we worked with the Ways of Seeing exhibit about a year ago in Baltimore um, that was um, blind and sighted artists. And we were able to put a way tag with that exhibit and actually put links to the artist's web pages and ways to stay in touch with them. So it, it turned out to be a tool that everyone was using. It was intended for accessibility, but sighted people were also able to get a lot more information. And similarly, in the, in the store with products, you can put links to user manuals or to the manufacturer page, you know, any sort of frequently asked questions you can, you can put on that way tag so that people can get that information themselves. Yeah, that's an excellent point, Jessica. In fact, one of the things uh, as we started way around our, our very initial focus was to be able to just have directions how to get from point A to point B in public spaces and give some information. But as we've developed, you know, again, we're kind of like everyone else that's experiencing way around right now. Our mind began expanding of what we could do. And so we have begun thinking about uh, being able to put uh, these tags on uh, appliances uh, at the manufacturer level so that you don't have to put that. So the manufacturer can have uh, directions how to use that appliance, how you can get the warranty, how to have direct access uh, to replacement parts. Uh, even the aspect of getting service on those appliances, uh, being able to have a, maybe that manufacturer has a list of local vendors in that area that can service that product, uh, being able to keep a record of the service of that product. And so as we start expanding that, we realize that, yes, this is a great tool for people that have visual issues, uh, but it's a great tool for those that don't also. Uh, it's one of those things that, uh, I don't know if many of you have heard about the Internet of Things. The primary focus on the Internet of Things is just being able to connect different devices together. But this is giving the individual information about that device. And I know there's many a time that uh, I had an instance about a year ago where our refrigerator uh, went out. Well, we came back from a trip and I had water all over the floor. And it was basically the water maker uh, filter that had frozen up and I had to be able to find the exact right filter and you know, get that installed correctly. And it was quite a challenge to get the model number of the refrigerator uh, to find the exact right filter, then to get it ordered. And then to have, you know, the installation instructions were not very good you know, to be able to put it on. And it had been so nice to just have it right there on the refrigerator to get that uh, and know exactly what to do. Uh, to get that filter and get it changed. So the opportunities are much more than for people that are blind or visually impaired. And we are working uh, with several organizations that uh, they started, they also have done the same thing where they started out with a very specific purpose to give people that have vision issues uh, information, but they quickly saw it has other applications, uh, languages, for example. Uh, you know, we're basically about getting information and getting it in the, in the form that you can understand it. 
So as a blind person, it may be that the text needs to be larger, or it may need to be in voiceover, or it may need to be a braille reader, uh, that, that uh, a braille display that you get. But there's also people that speak different languages. They may, they may need to get it in Spanish or Italian or French or whatever. And um, then there's, there's a lot of other things that uh, people with, uh, you know, with other issues that they need to get it in, in their form that they can understand that information. So uh, we just feel like way around is just at its very uh, infancy of being able to get information to people. And then Darwin, you and I have talked as sort of iOS and Android evolve with the NFC or near field communication technology that we're getting more to the point where you'll just be able to bring your phone up to something without the app even running and eventually having it just launch the app and, and give you that information without having to take a few steps kind of in advance to get there. Yes. Uh, in fact, right now with the Android device, that works right now. So if you do not have WayAround installed on your phone, if you were to hold your NFC reader of an Android device next to a WayTag, it would immediately take you to the Google Play Store directly to the WayAround app. And, and so you could download that. And once you've downloaded and installed WayAround, uh, if you just held that phone up to that tag again, it would actually start the WayAround app. So you wouldn't even have to go find that on your front screen or your home page, wherever you've got the, the icon. You would just hold it up to the phone. It would, it would start way around. And then you would hold it up there to you know, one th a third time uh, to get the actual information. So that really makes it easy for anybody uh, that if they, if they don't have way around, they don't know about way around, uh, when they hold that phone up to it, it immediately gives them the information how to get way around and how to, how to start it and how to use it. Yeah, I think especially as people get started, sort of the fewer interactions they have to do, the better. You know, if they can just scan the tag and assuming they have the app in there, just have it read it without having to click on things and open and press yeah. buttons, you know, just as, as you can take steps out of processes that can help at least with beginners or even an advanced user just in terms of quick productivity. Right. Absolutely. We all like efficiencies. Mm -hmm. Yes. Go ahead. And, Go ahead, Jessica. Um, sure. And I was I was just going to add that one of the advantages of having a center like Envision tagged is you can teach people how to read a way tag. And we often say if you can read a way tag, you can create your own. And so having a center with, you know, with tags that people can practice, you know, where is that NFC reader located in your phone? How do you scan? And once you've scanned a couple of times, there's that aha moment. And then the the entire app is opened up to you. So it it not only is it providing great information, but it's also an additional training tool. Yeah, and we we ordered a bunch of the regular tags just so folks here and you know folks that Therese might be training, mm -hmm. you know, we could give them a couple of them and just kind of mm -hmm. show them how to use it and maybe have them start with one or two things around their home just to be able to test it and think of more possibilities to use it. Yes, I'd like to throw out definitely I've shown it to a lot of my clients uh, in our rehabilitation clinic. We've got a lot of folks that are el elderly and they're suffering from memory loss as well. And to have an app that they can just scan with their phone and automatically the information is there is amazing. And they find it to be another way to bring their independence back. And Therese, you're, I should have you come next week because that's exactly what we're going to be talking about is um, with the increasing um, aging population that is experiencing vision loss along with other conditions um, you know, that often accompany aging. Um, Way Around can be really helpful for, for multiple things. And our co-founder, Armin Fisher, is going to be talking some about his experience with that. So please do come back. Um, I'll go ahead and put in a plug for our third and final Train the Trainer um, webinar next Tuesday. Okay, great. I'd love to come. And Therese, I'm curious if someone, you know, wanted to add way around to their toolbox, and I'm thinking in terms of, you know, a professional like yourself, if they wanted to, you know, bring in way around as another tool to recommend to clients, how would you recommend that they get started? Um, well, what I did, I had somebody bring it to me and 
I just played with it myself. I installed it. I, and then once I found out all of the opportunities and all the different things that you could do with it, then I just took it to um, uh, my HR department who, who lo loved the idea for their um, adding it to the micro market. And knowing that the majority of our employees over at the Water Street factory are, are blind and low vision, uh, then it just made it, it was a no brainer. They just wanted to add it immediately and implement it and get the ball rolling with that. Um, as far as showing it to my clients, I mean, I do the same thing. I give them a tag and I let them play with it and show them how to use it and how to change the information on the tag and, and implement all the different ways that they can use it. And they really find it exciting. And, and it's a way of gaining independence again. That's great. And um, I did, I wanted to mention that with our new release that came out about a week ago, you can now log in and out of different accounts. So if you were working with a client and you wanted to log into their way around account on your own device and help write some of that information, that's now something you can do with way around if you're working one-on-one -on -one with somebody. That's great. That's great. I also want to point out, I know um, that with iOS 14 um, for the iPhone, they're looking at uh, making that technology available where you go in somewhere and uh, their app automatically pops up. So maybe we're becoming closer to where on the iPhone, um, that technology of way around app you know, as it works in Android coming up there. Yes, yes that is true. That is true. Mm -hmm. We uh, we are aware mm -hmm. of that and we will be incorporating that. It'll work just a little bit different in that yeah. uh, Apple wants you to be able to have control. So once you scan that, uh, it'll ask you, do you really want to to go here? And so oh. when you all you have to do is say yes, uh, but mm -hmm. it'll work in basically the exact same way as the Android. Mm -hmm. So yes, we will be putting that in way around soon for uh, for iOS also. That's great. And that's one of the advantages of using the smartphone. It's not, you know, one of, one of the great things about having a smartphone is you don't have another device um, to label all of your things, but you also have access to all of the other features on your smartphone now and the features that will be developed in the future. So, you know, with Way Around, you can link directly to a URL, you know, you can, you can access um, maps if you put in an address and there's just all sorts of information that um, way around can really act as the hub for you to easily get to those things. And you know, with each um, new operating system development, um, Apple and Android tend to do fairly similar things, although not exactly at the same time, but there just continue to be lots and lots of opportunities. And with our, our data structure, which um, if you're a database person, um, you, you probably understand that all of our information is stored in a database that's structured. And so we, we have talked with some organizations about creating um, links if they have a content management system or if they have you know, some other um, place that they're collecting their data. We have the possibility of integrating that with Way Around as well. So there's a lot of ways that this can become just more and more powerful. And we're glad that there's a lot of ongoing development that it's not just created and done, you know, that you are really looking at adding features both to the app and, you know, for enterprise accounts. Mm. Yeah, one of, one of our biggest things right now, as we, as we came out with Way Around, you know, it was new, uh, NFC was new, people did not understand that, it, you know, it's different than a camera, uh, no longer do you have to focus thing, you just get it close so the radio waves just bounce off of that tag and get you the information. So that was new. Uh, the way that we were doing things as far as uh, just being able to get that information directly, that was all new. But as we are, have started expanding uh, and seeing the different opportunities, one of the things that was the biggest challenge was, okay, now we have to get information into these different tags. Right now, individuals can put that information in themselves. But as we're moving forward in public spaces, uh, just like yourselves at WIC, you are putting that information in at the uh, micro market. And so they do not have to put that information in. It's just there. And so that's one of the areas that we are expanding right now. We are talking with multiple organizations to be able to have that information just available. So we are moving forward, not just in developing the app, 
but developing information that will be available uh, for people when they do scan a tag. Wonderful. Well, I'd like to switch gears just a little bit. Um, and with Wix's focus on training for office jobs and uh, more white collar environments, um, one of the things, Mika, that you said to me recently is it's really not that hard um, to, to set up assistive technologies that will make a blind or visually impaired person successful in an office environment. And what are some of the technologies that you recommend um, to people who are who are looking for employment in that type of an environment? I mean, I think the foundational skills for people looking for this type of employment are kind of learning Windows, um, a screen reader such as JAWS or NVDA, and then some of the Microsoft products, which are used in a lot of businesses. So Microsoft Office and kind of just having those foundational skills. And I know, for instance, NVDA is, is, has and always has been free. And right now the JAWS and Zoom text uh, assistive technologies are available on kind of a trial license and they just extended that. So folks that may not have had it before can install it. And then throughout this pandemic, there's just been a ton of resources. If people want to learn different topics, there's been a, a, a number of free trainings out there. So kind of using that and it can help you both in terms of home and learning things for the workforce. That's great. And we've had several HR departments contact us and say, you know, what would it look like to install way around so that, you know, our employees with vision loss could get better information, you know, whether it's an open concept um, work environment or just, you know, a multi-floor building. There's lots of different ways, even you know, binders and manuals could be tagged with away tags. So um, people are getting really creative with how they can incorporate way around um, to make everyone's lives a little bit easier. And I also wanted to give you our um, accessible product hotline, which is a, a nationwide service. It's kind of geared toward end user consumers, but really anybody can call in and people can ask questions about you know, whether it be microwaves or headsets or exercise equipment. And right now we kind of have the bandwidth where even if there's not, a, we have several of the products in house, but even if we don't, our representatives can research that for folks. So that phone number is 316-252-2500. And I'll put that into the chat here. And then I also wanna mention our Accessible Toolbox podcast. Um, we review a number of different products with that. And also we, about once a year or so, we do an update on Uber's newest features. So I'm just also typing that into the chat. Great, and I'll also include those in the follow-up email so that people can have direct links to those. And we'll prob once we get the micro market fully set up, we'll probably do a podcast as well, just kind of showing this concept of how something like Way Around can be used in a, in a public space. Great. Well, we'll look forward to um, working with you on that one. Sure. Well, we have we have about twenty minutes left, and so I'd love to go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, so, if you have questions, you can. Um, raise your hand to do that on a Mac, it's option Y, PC is alt Y, and if you're on a phone, it's star nine. And you can also ask a question in the chat if you'd like to do that. And it can be about way around for public spaces or um, a question for Mika, for Therese. Yeah, I what? Darwin, go ahead, and then um, we have a question from Milton. Okay. Uh, you know, what I, I was just going to say, again, as, as we're starting to uh, do things in the public spaces, uh, there's just so many different avenues uh, of doing this. So if you have a, a thought or a question, uh, you know, be sure to get in touch with us at connect at wayaround.com. And one of the things that we've talked about, too, is just using uh, Way Around to be a tool to learn. Again, we mentioned last week of uh, having lesson plans or whatever. And as you're training, uh, your students and they have that lesson plan and they, they may have a link to some URLs of a very specific thing, whether it's braille training or whatever. 
but they're having some sort of issue that you're having to remind them time and time again, you can go in and edit that tag to add the information that they're forgetting so that when they get home, they don't forget you know, that one specific thing that helps them in that lesson. Uh, so it's one of those things, it's not just a lesson plan, it's a lesson plan that you can edit and make it very specific for that one individual. Great, thank you. And Milton, I unmuted you. Okay, the question I have is, say uh, a blind person goes into a place with their smartphone, uh, they download the app, do they still have to register the app to get a space on the uh, server? Um, you know, because we know that the app is being distributed, I guess, was well, well, free, but uh, you have to buy tags, but they're not going to buy tags and they're just going to a public place and wanting to use the way around tags. Let me answer that. That's a great question, Milton. Uh, what we will, what we're going to do is have a guest. So without actually creating your own account, the only reason you need an account is if you want to store your own information. If you're just reading other people's information, you know, in a public setting, there's no reason for you to have to have an account. So no, you will not have to create an account. Uh, you will just uh, be able to, to enter that. What we will, what we're currently thinking is that when you sign in, uh, rather than having to create an app, you would just say guest. And so you would select on the guest and that would allow you to come in as a guest. You could not create any tags as a guest because you would not have an account uh, to store that information, but you could read other public information without having to create that account. Does that answer your question? Oh, I, I think I took him off. Okay. Good, yeah, really good question. Uh, yeah, that does answer my question. Okay, thank you, Milton. You know, and Jessica did mention earlier uh, that that we have the act, the capability of linking to different databases out there. Uh, I know we had a question uh, previously on a, a previous webinar series about places like museums. Uh, you know, where's the data going to come from? Uh, and what we have found as we've talked to several different places is that they uh, they do have information available. Uh, it, it may not be as wide spread as we would want to be, uh, but they do have information. We talked with an aquarium that they have a lot of data about the different animals, you know, the different fish and things and the sounds that they make and have audio files uh, and just, you know, just data. And so if that data is already available, we just would be able to link directly to that without having to create it from scratch. Uh, same thing in art museums. Uh, there's a lot of artwork that, uh, especially some of the major pieces, uh, there's already just tons of data that's available for those particular art pieces. And so we would just be able to link to that existing data, uh, but an individual art museum can always add the information that they want uh, to be specific for their, for their location. Good, and Darwin, I have a question from the chat. Um, someone says, have you ever considered using public way around for labeling card games? Um, things like apples to apples um, and and marketing them. And yes, uh, great question, great idea. Uh, this is where all we you know we could put that in ourselves, but it would be so much better if we could link with the manufacturers that they already have all that information as data, and so all they have to do is just link it and you know to a tag, uh, and it would just be there and available. But but even before they do that. You know, we can do that, or you yourself can do that. You'll have somebody, you might read that information uh, with an OCR, uh, you know, to get to scan that and just copy that and paste it onto a tag so you'd have that information. But yeah, great idea. I think that's perfect where you can actually get the, the specific directions and information, uh, you know, from the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. And I know Uno made a big splash, um, I think about a year ago, because they came up with a Braille deck, which was very cool. And you know, if if people have games that they love, we have a, a poker player who's a way around user, and he's labeled his entire deck of cards with way tags so that he can play poker with his sighted friends. Um, and he's he's really been advocating for us um, to to create a deck of cards, but we haven't gone there yet. 
Um, we'd love to work with, you know, any sort of manufacturers though. And if you know people, um, please make an introduction. That's often how, how the ideas happen. A really good question. So. You know, an uh, another thing that uh, in public spaces, another place that we, we want to be able to go uh, is transportation. Um, transportation, again, there's, there's data already out there and a lot of that information you can get on the phone itself. Uh, and, and so it's, it's, uh, it's not a matter of do we, are we replacing information that's on the web or the internet? No, we're just trying to be able to get you uh, to where you can get that information quickly and easily. So if you're at a bus stop uh, and you want to find out what the schedule is for that particular bus stop, you know, we could, we could have a tag that's located on that bus stop that gives you the very specific information of this is where you are. It could also give you information about surroundings of where there's benches or you know, covered seating or, uh, you know, just different walks or whatever, the, the cross streets, uh, but it would be linked to the actual database of that transportation company. So you would know what the routes are when the buses are coming. And, and those could actually even be updated in real time so that you get very specific information about the bus that's about to come uh, to that stop. Uh, so the, you know, again, the possibilities are pretty much endless. And, and so what, to make that happen, we really do want to start with the grassroots. That's uh, what we have mentioned multiple times. We need to get users understanding uh, how to use Way Around. What are the possibilities? And that's why we have this, uh, this uh, series right now of train the trainers, because the trainers, you guys that are trainers, uh, will, will be a great influencer of getting uh, a, a broader user base. And as we broaden that user base, when we talk to manufacturers or transportation companies or game companies, uh, they, you know, that's one of the first questions they ask is how many users do you have? And, and right now we are, uh, we do have a, a pretty limited number of people. Uh, it's pretty broad as far as uh, geographic areas. We have people in all parts of the world, but we don't have huge numbers now. And so that is one of our focuses right now is to expand the, the numbers of people using Way Around so we would have more influence and impact on the manufacturers for them to provide the data themselves. And then one of the good things about this solution is just that you can access the information again in large print by voice or refreshable braille so that you're not tied to one modality in terms of accessing the tag information. Yeah, and the, that's a great point, Mika, and especially for people that may have some sort of a degenerative eye disease, you know, where right now you may need the large print, but down the road you may need something different, and it, you're not going to have to re-tag everything. You can shift how the information is displayed. And yeah, I do I'm, have a couple of, um, okay. go ahead, Darwin, and then I have a couple no. of questions from the chat. No, let's go ahead and ask the qu answer the questions. Okay, good. So someone um, is saying, um, if you're using Way Around for public spaces, how would a person know the tags are available to be scanned? Like if you enter a building, um, how would you know to look for them? Okay, uh, great question. Uh, one of the things that as you enter a building, our, our technology, even though we're using NFC tags right now, uh, we can use all kinds of technology. We can link to UPC codes or QR codes. We can also link to beacons. So as you enter a store, uh, we, would pro we would probably have a beacon right there in the entrance of that store. And if you've got the Way Around app, you would have a notification that this location is uh, furnished with Way Around. And so the first thing it would do is it would tell you the basic things. We plan on having different levels uh, for stores. It may be a very basic level where it's just uh, uh, things like maybe the elevators and restrooms and stairs and exits. And that may be all that they actually have. Uh, but there may be another level that they've actually included the information on all of uh, the shelves at a grocery store, or they may have all the information on all the ADA signs uh, throughout the building. And so, so the first thing is to, to find out whether Way Around is there or not. But when we install, this is one of the things that we were wanting to be very uh, standardized, that we do put things in a very specific location. That's why we were working with Nika and Therese uh, on these micro markets is we want to have those at a standardized location 
so that no matter which micro market you go to, you know that there's going to be a tag right in front of the product on that shelf. Uh, and so as far as public spaces, ADA signs, people that are blind are familiar with those ADA signs. Um, they're not always at the exact location they should be, but they're, they're generally pretty close. It's limited to around that door or that opening. And so uh, we, we have some ways of even enhancing that. Uh, that we will have a we have a marker uh, that we will place on the baseboard. So once you come up to a door, if you're if you're not wanting to touch the door, not wanting to feel around on the wall, uh, we will have a marker directly underneath that NFC tag, uh, that way tag, uh, and it, that tag will be at a very specific height. So you will know as you come into that building that the that uh, at all the doors at the ADA signs there are way tags and they will be at a very specific location and we'll have tools to help you. There'll be some other things, uh, for example, uh, an, another place that uh, you, you want to know where information is at uh, uh, an intersection of two corridors. Uh, so what we might have there, we may go ahead and have that uh, beacon as you're coming up to that corridor, uh, but you may be a little bit disoriented that, okay, you know, is is this quarter the right quarter that I'm, 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 I'm going to turn right here, but I'm not sure that I've got the right quarter. Well, what we will, uh, what we plan on doing is uh, putting a tag at the actual corner, all four corners around the right hand side of the corner. So when any, any time that you go reach for a corner, uh, you'll have that marker at the baseboard again that you could feel with a uh, you can either feel with your toe if you don't have a cane or you might train your dog, your guide dog to be able to see those markers. But at the very same height, uh, right around the corner, you'll have a way tag and it can get you very specifically oriented to the corner to the right is this, and the corner to the left is that one, and give you very specific information to help you get oriented. So we do have multiple places that we will put these tags at standardized locations uh, and, and that will just evolve. And that's why we're working closely with the people that are coming in and, and working with us on public tags is we do want to standardize where they are going to go. Good, Good question. So, yeah, and there's, there's um, lots of plans. And as, as we work with each um, organization that's installing Way Around for Public Spaces, there's always new considerations. Um, you know, there's a lot of similarities and there's something unique with just about every single physical space. And a lot of that is what's helping us um, right now to, to think through, well, what if this, can this be applied to everyone? We don't wanna have, um, well, let's just kind of make it fit in this one place. Let's make sure that um, people have a very similar experience across the board. And we do have a question from Jim. Jim, I'm gonna unmute you. You may need to also unmute yourself. Go right ahead. So my question is, is uh, I could see in a grocery store or a market where you've got two items very close together. Um, do you ever have interference between two of the stickers where you're trying to scan item number one, but it's picking up item number two and how far away do they have to be to avoid that? Yeah, Jim, um, Darwin, do you wanna take this one or you want me to oh, go? Oh, sure, go ahead. You, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And I'm, I'm just so excited that you asked it because it's really one of the advantages to um, the technology that powers way around, which is NFC. It's the, the main technology that we're using now. And it's NFC stands for near field communication. And so you have to be very close to the tag to scan it within about an inch. So um, like the example, the micro market that Teresa and Mika have, you know, products are, are stacked very close to one another. Even, pa you know, packages of gum can be pretty small. And the tags, you're not going to get information from one tag if you're scanning another one, even if they're, as long as they're about an inch and a half apart, you'll know exactly which tag you're getting information from. And there's, you know, there's other technologies like beacons that will give you a more general um more general information that will get you within you know three or four yards um, but then you you need to go from that okay i'm kind of in the right area to you know what's the exact thing that i need and that's that's where nfc and way around really shines cool yeah Great, thank you thank you jim and you know, one of the things too is uh you know we don't claim to be the the answer to everything 
what we want to do is we want to be able to link to other technologies uh, and take advantage of other technologies. Just and that's uh, that's exactly why we have uh, chosen the the smart uh, phones, smart devices. Is because they can link to other devices. And so via Bluetooth, we can link to uh, different devices or items. Uh, we can link to different databases on the cloud. Uh, and so we can link to different technologies. Uh, our, pre our previous series, we talked about using various uh, uh, technology for like the Seeing AI or Be My Eyes or IRA to, to be able to get information from them uh, and then put that information into WayRound. So uh, it's, it's not a matter of WayRound being the answer to all your questions. The main point that, that WayRound has is that it's, it's very specific at a very specific location. It's very easy to read. You don't have to focus a camera. Uh, you just get your phone you know, very close to that tag and you tap it. We can link to databases. Uh, and then we can also, you as an individual, can create your own information and add it to that information without having to get someone else to do that. Good. Thank you. And we're going to take one last question. It's a phone number ending in 5674. Go right ahead. Okay. This is Lori Reber. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Lori. Uh, okay. Hey. Um, yeah, my question is related to beacons. I want to make sure I understand them. Is that just a way around tag that has more general information or is that something besides way around? Uh, the basically what we would do is that beacon would have an identification on it and so with that beacon it, it would work just like it was an NFC tag and so when we get the information from a beacon that beacon says I'm here uh, and we would know that it's a beacon and it has a very specific ID and so uh, with the way around account you'd be able to uh, add information just like you do to a tag it's just that it's from a beacon and so you would not have to do anything with the beacon itself other than for it to broadcast that, uh, that, that ID. And you know, again, that's where we will work with them to make that happen. Uh, but there's not really any programming on the beacon itself. Uh, it's just within the WayAround app of getting the ID of that beacon and then adding information based upon that beacon. The information though will be very general in nature uh, because again, a beacon broadcast, you, know, you can get a, a different strengths where they may just only broadcast you know, eight or 10 feet, but you can also get them to broadcast several hundred feet. So uh, that, that's why it's not real specific information because it's general. And so when we're, when we're getting the information from the beacon, it will be general information to guide you to something that's a very specific information at a very specific location. So we would put one in so when someone either enters the building or gets close to the micro market, it might say, you know, there's a micro market here and the products are labeled with way around. So it would, you know, even people that didn't know about it or maybe were visiting us, you know, would be able to get that information. Yes, and, and yes, and it, it could give them that information of scan the tag on the shelf, uh, the front of that shelf in front of the products and you will get the information about those products. So. We, we can add information to get them started, if, even if they were a, uh, if they'd only downloaded that app, you know, recently uh, and were a very novice beginner and have not come, come to any of our webinars or anything, we could give them the information they need to be able to get to those tags. And a beacon, it, it is a separate hardware device. I would say it's about the size of a deck of cards or there's different sizes of them and they usually have their own batteries and then you would yes. mount it on the wall or you know some but they're really small and they're yes. fairly low cost yes yes and you know like you said they do have batteries that's one of the reasons that we use the nfc tag is because it does not have a battery you know we we can have a battery uh you know to be able to make it uh send out information but the challenge with that if we're going to have these tags you know ubiquitous all over the world in all kinds of locations we don't want people to have to go be replacing batteries. And so uh, that's one of the things that's nice about the NFC tag is you don't have to replace a battery. Beacons, you're not gonna have as many beacons. Uh, there still will be a, a good number and the batteries last a good, a good amount of time. Some of them are two or three years, some of them are five years. I think they're even working on batteries to last longer than that. Uh, but, but if the battery is not working, you're not gonna get that information. Uh, and that's, and uh, Go ahead, yeah. Jessica. Well, Darwin, I was just going to say, um, I think we could keep talking about this for a long time, but we have about one minute left. Um, okay. So I think 
Um, you know, there's just so many exciting things for way around for public spaces. Um, and we really want to work with especially um, centers, training centers like Envision, um, the WIC. So if you have an idea for how to use way around in your center, um, please get in touch with us. There is a subscription cost and we will, we want to work with you. So um, get in touch with us and we can talk about how to do that. Um, please do, I'm just going to run through really quickly all my wrap up things, but please do attend next week. And um, we will be talking more about um, people with multiple conditions and how Way Around can support them. Um, and if you have a training that you'd like me to do for your organization, if you work for a state or a private organization, we're happy to do that as well. Um, so thank you all so much. Um, be on the lookout for an email in a couple of days, and I will send the information that Mika shared um, the, to the podcast and the hotline. And I'll end with a big thank you to Mika and Therese. And if there's anything you would like to say as we wrap up, uh, feel free. Just again, it's been great being with everyone and kind of exploring way around in public spaces and just look forward to building out our environment and also kind of the next chapters as way around grows. Wonderful. Well, thanks again. See everybody next week. Bye-bye.